did it. Yep. Double. That was Dapple. I'm sorry, guys. That was Dapple. Yeah, we gotta blame that on Dapple. That that live that short cutoff was Dapple. We blame it on Dapple or the BIA. BIA is about the Unified Commando. Four hundred yards over there, but I don't yeah. believe BIA has that type of technology. So you th- you know what I thought too? I said maybe they're just messing with us. Those big Unified Command trucks. They're probably empty. Yeah, probably they, nothing in. <laughs> yeah, they're probably on loan. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, because we don't have the budget in Indian country to have that type of technology. I don't know why they would need it, because you know if they go there and try to hack cell phones, everyone's got a prepaid Obama phone. Yeah. <laughs> 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 On the res. I think that the federal government would fund that if they knew that they were turning the BIA against their own people. What they know now is that Indian country does have the the technology and the smarts and the resources that they thought they didn't have. And for the last 500 years, we have been conditioned in indoctrination, colonization, assimilation, and every force of militarized uh, encroachment from civilian to corporate and government is all around reservations. And what this movement did was it showed the world that we are still dealing with it. We're still trying to protect the homelands and we will gather in numbers to do that. And the conquer and divide did not work. That conquer and divide strengthened everybody here. And that's how the movement was. Very powerful. Very powerful. So we were we were back to, can you recap a little bit about what you were sharing before Dapo cut us off? What was I talking about? Oh, I was talking about how the BIA was a lot more lax yesterday. And it brought a lot of stress off of water protectors that were trying to get out. And I know that a lot of water protectors were afraid that they were going to come in like they did at, at Rosebud and at Ochate. I knew, I knew that they weren't going to come in that way because, I mean, when you were going through the checkpoints, they were a lot more laid back with us than Morton County ever was. And I could tell that they, they knew that if we were making the consistent effort to get our structures out of sacred stone, that I don't think that they wanted, I don't think they wanted to do it that way. You could tell that they didn't want, like Myron said, they didn't want to be there, you know, and I don't think that when they signed, because there was a lot of young BIA officers, I don't think when they signed up for that job, they had foreseen that they would be doing a job like that, or they would have to be the one to, you know, it might not feel like it to them at the, at the moment, but once it does settle in, you know, work against their own people. Yeah, I thought they would have to go home and face their home, face their family, mm-hmm. face their tribe and community. Mm-hmm. So, but you know, um, they're just doing their orders. And you know, from driving by, they were looking down, not looking up. And that's what we've seen in many of the officers in Morton County was yeah. that they were looking down and not looking up. And so yesterday was, was, uh, was really a tense full day because it was like any moment they could be coming through. Yeah. And so, you know, did everything I could to make sure that we communicated through the whole camp, let them know not to uh, harass BIA and let the allies know, or the people that came in solidarity that we're not, they're not coming to raid at that moment, to just go down and educate them as much as possible. Hey, they're coming through, just doing an assessment. If this guy looks goofy like he's smiling because that's how he looks. Yeah. <laughs> That's just his face. That's his face. He looks goofy and he's smiling all the time. Yeah. So, you know, just wave at him. Yeah. And they laughed. And so, you know, try to settle it up and and walk all the way around to the bottom and come all the way around to the top and just check in with people. You guys okay? You guys need help? And everybody pitched in until noontime came and then they thought they were going to do the raid and all our helpers cut in half. half. Yeah, about half the camp left. And then that's when, you know, you could feel the tensions rising because people didn't know what to expect and they didn't know if their belongings were gonna be taken. They didn't know if they were gonna just trash their mm-hmm. belongings. They, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty. And so that's what made it a lot more stressful situation yep. than what it should have been. Yeah, it was very, very good though that they listened and I'm, I'm glad that they listened. And so the, the, the step when people started to roll out, they felt comfortable right towards the end, like, thank you guys. and. Mm-hmm. Now we got to counteract some crazy people that are with crazy media walking around inaccurately reporting things. 
but that's okay. We were there and we can show the video to document that. People did try to clean and they really did try to pick up as much as they can in the amount of time they had. One day, on top of moving, that was not easy for many people. And um, so the, the Cheyenne River's got a, can a gathering over here, a prayer gathering for the healing for PTSD and the people that have the want to come over and um, get balanced so they can make their transition. And um, from that point on, I think it's really, this is a spark to many, many different um, Keystone and Pipeline actions that are going to be throughout the country. And tribes are setting up, people and communities are setting up. And I learned a lot here. What, what, <clears throat> what is the thing that you learned that you can take home to your community, to your family? That this can be done nonviolently. You know, a lot of people, when I first came to Standing Rock and a lot of the actions before they started getting viciously violent with Martin County, a lot of people automatically assumed that we would never be able to be successful without violence. And that is such a colonized way of thinking because that is what Martin County, they didn't think that they could be successful in being the distraction from Dakota Access Pipeline without being violent towards us. And we proved them wrong that we can we can be successful without violence. Mm -hmm. Very much, yes. Very powerful. What what's uh, what do you think about the camps? You know, be a, a, the sustainability on one side and fossil fuel heavy on the other side being extracted. But I, I, I don't want to. I want to play the devil's advocate here. We also have fossil fuel using our vehicles because we don't have an alternative, though. Mm -hmm. There you go. So yeah. our living was alternative, though, right? Yeah. Our living was completely alternative, and I'm going to be honest, when I first came here, I didn't know anything about solar panels or, you know, wind, you know, cultivating energy from those sources. I didn't know a lot about it until coming here, and Sacred Stone was really mm -hmm. amazing at being able to master those things and show the world that we can do this sustainably and leave less of a footprint on, a negative footprint on the earth, but... It has to be a team effort. It has to be, everyone has to pitch in. You know, even once the um, porta potties got taken away, the compost toilets, you know, that was that was an issue for about a week or two. We didn't before we had the compost toilets. Yeah. And once we got those installed, and those worked amazingly. I just like didn't. We, I loved it. I didn't have to touch the dirty flush. Mm hmm And they didn't smell. They they smelled better than the porta potties. So digital smoke signals turned the RV as well into a compost toilet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is uh, was pretty interesting. I made it. You made I'm it. I'm just going to take credit <laughs> for that. Oh, me and Kaylee. Kaylee so, made it. So, yeah, everyone used it. Will, that guy was a fan of going in there. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, Will's the other drone pilot. Brooke's a drone pilot, and she got helper over there. Uh, Tina, our editor, is learning to be a drone pilot. She's mostly editing, but she got mm -hmm. to play around on the drone a little bit. Trying to make sure a social media and film specialist is having all those tools that you need. It's not one main tool, it's several tools. Just go out and share the story, but also like an ambassador to role model how you conduct yourselves out there. Like you bring your teachings from your family, you bring your teachings from your community, and if you don't have them, we're in a community where you can role model healthy teachings. That's what I learned too is, you know, you may not have them where, you're, where you come from, the way you need them, but you can get them here. There's so many amazing people. Mm -hmm. So we see them really is. running around with their iPhone. Got Tim from Bank Exit in but the that, back. But that's the great thing about it is that, you know, even though we have to go around and somewhat debunk some of the, the propaganda and the fake news that are going around, we document so much that it's easier for us to be able to do those things and not have to worry about fighting propaganda or fake news because we document everything. That's right. That's right. So many of you guys were... Um, it looked like my screen's going black. That's got to be Dapple. There we go. Yep. <laughs> so uh, um, many people on the ground were filming. I think what people are worried about was, you know, um, that's time is coming to pass. What they were worried about. Now what we got to do is to clean up. We got to make sure. I learned a lot. You know, not only that, when the tribe pulled out with its uh, cleanup, garbage <laughs> packed up. They mm -hmm. packed up garbage, packed up heavy. And then when the tribe started to um, hold Dapple accountable for the environmental impact study, they focused it on us, mm -hmm. on the on ours. And we got so the media got mixed up in the camp being dirty, 
if it was a if we were to do it all over again, I think it would have been important to have the tribe go back in and focus on collect cleanup. So they wouldn't have had that. And then we would have been able to move out quicker. And if we could have graded the roads and made them mm -hmm. accessible and drained it, it would have been easier as well. Yep. Because look at Morton County did it and their, their contractors uh, or um, Army Corps of Engineers and they're driving all over mm -hmm. with heavy rigs. Mm -hmm. So that was the big problem is nobody can move out effectively like sacred stones because they could not get through the mud. Yep. That was the that biggest was a problem. Issue. Yep, they couldn't get out through the mud. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment was was demolished by by the Army Corps of Engineers, but I want to also let people know is that you know this was uh, not in vain. It's it kept many people warm, mm -hmm. fed a lot of people, um, thousands of people. Well, put, not only that, but the donations that were left behind were circulated throughout North Dakota to all the homeless shelters and domestic violence shelters and even some of the schools because we had a, such an overload of donations. But you're not gonna hear about that in the news. You know, K-Fire isn't gonna, isn't gonna tell all of Bismarck about that. Yeah, so there was a lot, um, and, and Osheti, what we documented with the uh, equipment being demolished, a lot of that though did take care of so many people mm -hmm. in their, their kitchens and foods. And there was what, three or four kitchens still going till the yep. end. Love Kitchen, uh, Seven Generation Kitchen, yeah, there was an amazing, um, amazing thing to witness and document and actually practice how you can do this in your community. A small, sustainable community. You can put a compost toilet out. So explain what we use for a compost. We use just, um, I suggest a black garbage bag, just so you don't have to see what's going on. Um, kitty litter, and I used, what was that? Um, bark. Yeah, it was like bark shavings. Bark shavings you can buy. Where'd you buy that? At Walmart. And they're actually really cheap. They're like yeah. two, three dollars for a huge So per scoop, right? So you you go do your business, you put a scoop in there when you're done, and how look how much water that how much water that saved. Mm hmm You know, for the price of a bag and the compost and when it filled up, you tied it and you will repurpose it later on. Yep. Back into the you know, as as soil, as dirt. A compost when it warms up. Yep. So that that's how you make your own compost toilet. Use a regular toilet, and you can even use your regular toilet at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're using an RV toilet. Between that's five cents a flush yes. off of your utility bill, people. <laughs> oh, how many gallons? How many um, gallons of water too? Yeah. I didn't you know. That. And then um, you know, between our media team and people coming in, there was about six people using it. Mm -hmm. So it. It could handle all six, and then you you wrap it up and do it again, and then um, so that was it. It was really inexpensive. That was a solution for the digital smoke signals media. Also, we had uh, California Solar provide the solar for charging the drone batteries and, and letting us edit, and uh, we had another RV connected to it as well, and that's how we were continuing to be off grid and edit anywhere we can go in the United States. It had batteries in there, um, diesel batteries. And then we also have solar units right here. I just got a little check. That's a, that's to charge the phones and anything that we have in, in solar packs that we're using as well. These are the things that we're using in media because we can't always stop and and plug in somewhere. Plug in, yeah. So uh, this rig is going to be used a little bit stronger with solar. It's going to be used a little bit wrapped around with solar. So these are solutions that we're using that you can get on Amazon, put them in your vehicle. Uh, I would suggest a converter stronger than um, one a converter with two plugins. Yeah, two, definitely, because I didn't know I need one. Yep, and <clears throat> from that point, we're still gonna continue to share what we learned down the road. People are on the road right now, you guys gotta be safe. And we're understanding that um, during the raid, there's, there's not, it's not a raid uh, at the- um, The sweep? The I would, sweep. I would call it I would a call, sweep. Yeah, the, we did what we could, educating everybody to let them know that this was not the fight. Indian country right now, This you came in solidarity, now we're gonna have to leave in a good way. You have nowhere to go, there is a transition camp. So we did everything we could to support the tribe and their decision, LaDonna and her decision, the BIA and their decision, and, uh, mm -hmm. and the FBI, 
who else was there? ATF. Park Rangers. Park Rangers. Yogi Bear was there. Yeah. The mascot at the Prairie Night Casino. Yogi Bear. <laughs> he was he was zip tied. He was zip tied. Yogi Bear. Was? Yogi Bear was zip tied for uh, talking about water protectors. Oh wow. Oh yeah. That's who I heard. And he was tased. From your aunt's cousin's uncle. Yeah, I heard it on Facebook. Twice removed yes. best friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the news we get, guys. Yep. Reliable so, sources. And I'll be still here documenting, putting things together for the community. We got some community projects, the youth projects down here. Um, still wanting to uh, help the college get the footage for their students to be able to document in the academic arena what's going on here at Standing Rock but also the government-to-government relationships that we're seeing here that, that was formed here at Oshetti and uh, Rosebud is very powerful. People are still coming in, United Nations we got. There's a lot of work. You know, Morton County violated the First Amendment. The, I've got court coming up soon. They violated that First Amendment to journalize. They also uh, search and seizure without a warrant. The other one is the Geneva Convention shooting medics and people in the back. That is all on video. Those are still gotta be addressed and several other things is to hold ourselves accountable as uh, as an individual sovereignty on taking care of our current environment. So any final words there, women's indigenous media? What, what words do you have to women media, women indigenous, uh, indigenous women wanting to get into media? Um, it's a very powerful thing. And documenting everything, especially everything he just talked about, is extremely important because we need to, well, not only hopefully see some accountability at the end of the day, but being able to go through the motions of being here for the last six going on seven months and mm -hmm. documenting all of these human rights violations and holding them hopefully accountable for it. Anyone that is in media, I know that I was shocked when I started seeing these things happen and when I did, I was, you know, I didn't start doing media until a few months into my stay here at Standing Rock, but once I did, I felt empowered to be able to document these things that were occurring so that we can stand up for the people and we can, you know, fight back together because these are the things that need to be addressed. Otherwise, it's only going to spiral out of control. You know, you're going to be seeing these at almost every pipeline fight or any, any protest that these human rights violations are happening at. Yeah, so the vets were out. Um, they all got out of jail. Mm -hmm. And they uh, we put a video on Digital Smoke Signals with an interview with uh, Evan, who's been amazing. You know, the vets came down. And a second wave of vets, not the first one. So the first ones, um, they could have came back. They raised a lot of money. Yeah, in a short amount of in time. In a short amount of time, a lot of money, and they didn't come back. And so a second uh, wave of vets that created called, they created their uh, group, and I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember what it's called, but it's got a bear logo on there. And we, we posted that on Digital Smoke Signals. We did an interview with Ed before, I mean, for Evan before he left, and they came back and used their resources to help the community and start a kitchen and food there. And um, I ate there, it was good. It was really it good. Was Every single every... day they, they had amazing food. And they had a little shack going on and it was very good. So they, they came back and they cleaned up and they helped and they went to jail. Now the colonel told them that they weren't going to go to jail. Mm -hmm. Told them that they were able to clean up and they did that and they ended up going to jail. And so they did go to jail. They got out. They're fine. Everyone went in that was fine. Um, I spoke with a young man that was on top of the roof who's trying to educate the Morton County Police Jameson? Department. Yeah, about I love him. how they were on sovereign land, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, Goofy Guy kept, didn't he, so they took his phone and he kept trying to use my phone to log into Facebook. I go, you <laughs> man, we're at an action. I don't know if you're an infiltrator. I don't care if you were on the roof. I don't know who you are, but you never ask anyone for their phone, man. <laughs> it's like asking someone yeah. their age. He kept coming back and asking again and asking, I was like, hey, dude. Then he he go oh, okay, I'm sorry, Myron, but he <laughs> he was all right though. Mm -hmm. He was all right. Mm -hmm. So these are the things we're going to continue to share. Um, thank you guys for asking that. I'm gonna go answer a few more questions here, and then we're gonna we're gonna cut it short here. Wow, there's a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Veterans respond. There we go. Thank you.
So I think women's indigenous media, you got you got video to edit and put out there and share still. I have tons, tons. So for digital smoke signals, what can it, can you continue to put one video out a day, sometimes two interviews of, of the after, what people thought afterwards? But this isn't over here. You still have two camps. You have Black Hoop and you have um, Cheyenne River Camp. And the predictions on the Cheyenne River Camp is what they're going to do is they're going to probably strangle the road, cut off the access to the road. It's the only thing they can do. Yeah. But they're not at a gathering. I mean, they're not at a camp. They're at a gathering, a prayer gathering, like a ceremony. But it is a ceremony. And it's for water protectors to go and get that healing from PTSD, which is very powerful. I got to say that is mm -hmm. what we need. Yeah, I was going to say it's needed. And um, you guys reach out to our brother Dean there. He's he's down in Iowa doing his work with Drone drone to be Wild. And um, he's probably looking at getting some help on what he's doing out there, helping the relatives out there. I'm not sure how it's going out there, but reach out to Dean. Let them know, give them support from Digital Smoke Signals and keep doing the hard work. And we're going to continue to do the hard work and support each other and stay together and stand strong together no matter what the outcome. No